Patch 1.02 Hearts of Ice is finally coming on the 15th of November. So let's go through the entire patch notes that have finally dropped. We did do this live and I've made a nice easy summary in today's video for you guys to know what you are going to need for this update. So stick around for new season 2 plus season 1 changes and even extra new heroes. Hello, yes, smash the like, comment, and subscribe for more daily videos with me, Mr. Sneak, an official Call of Dragons content creator. And we're going over update 1.020, Hearts of Ice. And as we all knew, we know season two came out and there was going to be issues, right? And But we all assumed that we would get a season two plus, which will obviously fix the season for the future. So then if anyone plays the game, say a brand new player, they'll only go through season one, two, and then three. So we are going to get an extra season, basically, of all the new update changes, meaning we get double the rewards again, which is really, really cool. But they've added a lot of stuff in and I really do like it. So we will go over some of the generalization they've gone over, which I do kind of, I will say, is a little bit, a little bit disliking in my part, um, since like you'll see here, when you look in at even just the first point, the terrain of Belleron has changed, making exploring land an even more exciting experience. Kind of kind of would like to know what that means, you know, I think everyone would uh, agree with that But as we know and as they did in the last season They did change the map they changed the way the map links worked as well as potentially just how the layout was So hopefully they've changed all of the maps choke points and really really tight zones Especially in the zone 5 area So we just gotta have our fingers crossed and hopefully point 1 is the thing that we're gonna be careful on but Point two is one that I'm actually very, very excited about because it's mysterious spires that have uh, might appear across the map. So basically what this sounds like if we zoom out of this area is for example, we all have our zone ones and then we have our zone two, which is obviously um, for me, it is Dolan. Um, but what you'll be get, maybe getting in the future is in the next zone, so in Camelhead here, or if we go to more Breeze, which is the connecting two areas where you are going to be able to obtain obviously the Hydras as well as your Necro Giant in this one zone, maybe they plot the, the Spire in this zone. And why am I saying that? It's because if you think about it, this is the one first actual major, major war zone, especially against your enemies right so if you win this zone as everyone knows you're gonna have this nasty area where people can just farm kill you all the time and you're not gonna have any response so what i think they're gonna be doing is placing a spire somewhere special maybe on one of these mountains you know where you can send troops to as you're gonna see in the notes and what you can do is invade into this area meaning you can actually fight and kill their troops which means you can uh, you can farm kill them. So it's, it's a kind of like a nice even way almost potentially of solving that issue. So really, really good thought on that. I'm not going to lie in, in here. And they're going to be changing stuff to do with policies, which we are going to talk about. So let's go to the next area, which is really, really important. The new heroes. We know we're going to get two new heroes. And as I guessed on my video on the first announcements and the little event that's going off right now, Skogel is going to be, or Skogel as we're naming her on here, is going to be in the lucky spin. So if you're looking for the infantry PvP hero with the tank tree, guess what? You're going to be able to get that. But Goresh, the guy with the cool hair dude that everyone's taking a loving to, is the infantry rally precision hero that's going to be available only on the strongest lord. But just remember, at the start of the season, as it does state here, the Wheel of Destiny event will be around, meaning you have the chance in the early game to even spin the Wheel of Destiny before the Lucky Wheel, before the Strongest Lord, and potentially unlock these heroes. And if you are maybe a free to play player or low spender and you're wondering if it's going to be worth it, it'd be really good if you do the Wheel of Destiny and you unlock Goresh, because it means you don't have to worry about spending on those daily chests at the end of the season that we've seen happening, like with Fear. Theodore and Sindrion, or you, and you don't have to worry about maybe the lucky wheel for Skogil, but you're going to be using.
using that lucky wheel anyway. So that's why I'm tailoring it more towards hoping that you unlock your Goresh on that Wheel of Destiny. It's going to be a really good big W for those players that do. We get a new artifact too, which is really nice. Spirit Bow Talk. It's an infantry PvP control one. It's going to be available in the Riches of the Forest and the Forge of Light events, which... As you guys know, I personally don't like these events. They're just a little bit too much gem heavy for the just average player to just go into, which is really cool. And we're getting a load of nice little additions to this season. So we're getting a new um, Wonder. We're getting a new um, War Pets capture, which is really, really good. But there's a lot more in this actual Hearts of Ice campaign that we're going to go about. So the change the way dragon trials works so we're going to leave a little bit of this stuff on screen for you guys to read and i'm going to give you a nice little brief um on it so they reduced the season one first so let's talk about season one they've changed the way season one dragon trials works they made it a, a lot easier for you guys basically and they've changing what items can be bought as well as renaming dragon glass into trial coins nice little just summary there you're going to be also not gaining any prestige from that area so the way now prestige is mainly going to be earned as you're going to see is through either da defeating darklings dark creatures donating to alliance tech or you can even get it like you've seen in the merit store so you're going to be able to do that right and um, they removed the quick loot feature that um from dragon trial so interesting but the big change what they're going to be doing for season two plus is the fact that the actual dragon trial system is completely changing they are not going to reset it anymore and instead of resetting it they are adding additional ones so what does this mean it means now for someone like myself what i can actually do is go back into the campaign now and i've always been one of those guys that as you can see we have so much income that honestly i've got nearly nine million prestige right and we haven't even completed the last you know seven areas so now what this is going to allow me to do is basically max out this entire area make sure it's all done i don't have to worry about it and then in the future i can just focus on the newest ones that are coming to the game which is really again interesting and the next thing we're going to talk about in the patch notes is to do with heroes yes heroes are going to be changed in this entire game so what they're going to be doing now when we go down into the um area here um what they're doing is they're making it so the hero season is a soft reset now. So instead of going all the way to level 1, this means you will be reset to level 30. How does this work? Basically, if your hero is under level 30, you will not have any reset. You'll just maintain whatever level you are at that time. If your level is above 30 all that happens is if you're 31 60 whatever you are it's going to drop down to 30 so you get a little soft cap but artifact levels will not reset and the arcane dust that you have will not be scrapped so this is interesting because now among the light this is leaning way more into the way rise of kingdoms works where stuff like this artifact feature where all the whale players now that do have six star maxed out you know levels on their artifacts compared to you guys i'm just saying guys you're gonna be doing way more damage from the start from the get-go and you're gonna feel it so it's interesting that they're doing it i actually like the artifact change but the only thing i'm a bit weirded on is why they're not removing the dust because now what this is allowing me to do even myself is the fact that i've got a bunch of cp stored here so 9.8k just to be exact and with that 9.8k i can just quickly blitz as many of these artifact dark creatures as i want right now and what it allows me to do is prepare and that's the kind of cool thing that we're leading on to so as you know we mentioned about the new artifact the spirit bone talk well, if you do unlock it, you can have all of this dust ready in the back that you can just max it out straight away to level 60. So that's a little heads up for you guys, right? 
So that's a, a really cool feature that is going to be added, but I'm still on the fence about it. We'll see how much this impacts, honestly, the free-to-play and the low spender, or just generally the average gamer, compared to those guys that are diehard gamers, the ones that are super whales and spend all the money on the game. We'll see how much of a divide this causes, right? So it is interesting to see, but... We're going to see. We're going to basically see what's going to happen, right? Um, what else has they been added to this system? So, as you guys know, we did mention the policies. So, in Season 2, as we've put all the way back up to the top here, the policy has been redesigned. So, the way they've actually been redesigned is they've removed, actually, that resource gathering area and some of the other areas on the policy tree. And what they've added in is more healing, meaning... That actual area is way more crucial for PvP, which again, I'm not going to lie, is leaning away from the original philosophy of the policy system. Because the original policy system had PvP stats in it, and what they saw was obviously the spenders would be able to gem out all of that with their obviously ahead in prestige from the dragon trials and get extra stats in pvp combat which is unfair against everyone else who just isn't able to spend that amount of money to do something silly like that right so it's going to be interesting we'll see how this shakes things up and maybe they might be able to go back on it but who knows what they also did cool um, add and they're changing a lot is the way Alliance and a Season work in the game. So the first thing they did add here is the turrets. So now they've added a brand new building. So alongside the keeps, you have now this turret building. Who knows if it's an upgrade from your current flag, where you upgrade the flag from the cannon barrage to a turret. And what the turret does is automatically attacks enemies within range. So if you have a keep and a tower right next to each other, you're getting double hit on the way in. I'm just saying I don't understand how we're going to push through any more choke points when it's designed like that. It's already had enough with the barricades and everything in the game. So it's going to be interesting to see what they do. However, with this, they've changed a lot of the you know, like I said, the season map and the way the season works. So if we bring it back down to where we were just talking about all of the hero area, you can come back down here and you're going to start seeing a lot of these changes. And there's two changes that they put together, which is a little bit further down, which is really cool, but goes hand in hand with this actual um, area. So what they've done straight away is they've allowed it, and I'm going to leave this bit on because it's the big details in this area. But what they've allowed you to do now is in the first seven days only of a season, you can resurge. What does that mean? It means, for example, and this is, I don't want to like lean into drama, but it's a best example. Pull that. A lot of you guys will understand the server 32 betrayal drama videos that's been going around, right? As you guys know, the DNS family had the ability, if they wanted to, to join a different alliance and hop from one map all the way to the other map and basically hit them from behind, you know, backstab and just push them out in zone one, making it so there's no safe zone. Now they're removing that. So you're only going to be able to resurge in the first seven days and at the very final Augustone area when it actually unlocks in the season. What does this impact? As you can see, it stops that betrayal migration method where you can join an area and resurge and kill them, right? But what it does still allow, which is a little bit a little bit eyebrowing is the fact that you can still go into and if you had a spy for example you could still spy try and drop in the same zone one as them try and kill them when the seize fire is over and if you do guess what you can stay in that zone and they resurge or if you lose guess what you are going to resurge but you have to make sure you've done this within the first seven days Otherwise, you're stuck in that zone and it's going to be an absolute mess. So just make sure that's something that you guys are paying attention to. 
But what they've also added in here, and I've not got it on screen here, and I'll leave it into the patch notes because I'm trying to keep this nice and short instead of going too crazy point by point, is the fact that they've added a truce zone. Yes, a very, again, area that I think is needed, but it could potentially open some new doors, right, of abuse. And we did talk about this on the live stream again when we first went point by point about this. So the truce zone is gonna be a new zone that you guys can basically go to and there's no PVP. So you can jump into this area, you know you're gonna be safe, you can't get attacked, you can't get hit, you're safe, right? So you should be hopefully able to go to this zone and farm. And if that's the case, this could potentially lead on some extra new, I'm just saying some new problems that could occur, but as we did mention in the live stream, the pros of all of this, the pros of the truce, the way the new uh, migration system works on the resurgence area as well, all of these new methods that are coming into this season outweighs the cons. There's only a few you know, ways that they could abuse potentially this system. Who knows if it does? But the pros are so much better because this is honestly guys the way that the devs i think have very carefully you know um addressed that betrayal system basically and allowed them to to get through into that zone so what else has come because there's so much more guys and i'm gonna just try and clean it up so we've only got a little bit left so these are going to be the last important bits that you're going to really honestly need to know about this. And if you do want to check out the full rundown, I did do a live stream of it. Watch the beginning section of the live stream because at around one hour within that live stream is when we do switch over from Call of Dragons to another game. Just to give you guys a heads up. So you can, can do that. Just um, switch over um, and, and watch the first hour basically. And we do break down this entire patch notes in that so it's all up online for you but the next one i really really want to talk about is actually new events and as we did mention in the podcast and we was hoping for it is and it's really really good the new behemoth raid is a cross server event meaning i could potentially make some amazing content with you guys so if you guys want to join in you can we can add each other basically because the way this works is you can add each other and invite your friends to fight and share the spoils you can also deploy multiple legions so maybe it might be a team of five and you can put five legions in there and that's 25 marches maybe they work it out so you know in total there'll be 40 marches in the game so it'd be interesting to see what happens right um so it's gonna be really cool i can't wait to see this new game mode come out it's something that's refreshing they also brought out a new treasure hunt game mode we'll see how that is they've also updated a lot of the events which is down at this area so the titans legacy the trial of light and the celestial battlegrounds all have received updates to make them more enjoyable a lot easy i would say a lot easier Easier, but making them more understanding as well as just making it more fun basically for you guys they've removed maybe some debuffs and enemies and added in some different ones so it's going to be interesting to see what they've done there and then to final things off obviously we've got a lot of extra stuff to do with the pc which is at the very bottom but i do want to talk about this little area at the bottom because there's a lot in there so there's stuff to do with content sharing so if you want to share your images say like you 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 took a really you made a really good steak you know you can now send that in an alliance chat friend chat friend chat friend chat friend chat and you can just do that right so the new way they can um make it a little bit more sociable in the game you can also now have the union chat which is the big one the union chats and allow you guys to speak between you and your union instead of having to create 20 30 group chats that might be one specific one for one area one specific for one you know whatever it is so you have nicely um a nice easy you know union chat to go through which is really good they've updated the way as well um stuff like honor it and the membership works with the um collecting what tokens it shows you what can how long it will take to be awakened 
you also are going to gain building resource collection changes you're getting so much extra over improvements that i'm going to leave there for you guys to read because honestly that there's not that too much added in to it what else has been added and this is going to be the finale of this whole whole zone if you want to say it on the patch notes because we've seen so far and i'm not gonna lie we've it's i give it a 7.5 out of 10 and i think that's a really good patch note meaning you know it's not exceptional there's not some crazy stuff out of it but they have done some other stuff which is like quality of life changes which is the the, the even richer combat experience so they made basically rallying ui look better which is going to be interesting to see but the really good one is stronghold changes so this might potentially as someone said in the chat which i think was a really good um shout out for it was because the alliance keep is no longer classed as a stronghold this might mean a behemoth cannot attack that keep, which is going to be interesting. So we'll soon see if that is going to be the case. Also, they've just done stuff where, like, if you're using off of Storm Peak or any of the blink artifacts, you don't have to retarget. You can just blink away, boom, you carry on moving. It's really nice and clean now. So it's going to be interesting, guys. There's so much honestly in this patch they did as you can see in this area split it down to season one so you guys have a better season one experience so it should be easier faster and just better gameplay for you guys and then in season two or two plus now you're gonna have a better map better experience again and hopefully this fixes all the issues that we've had in our first season two which then would mean after this season two plus and we play through this whole map again for the second time we will then go into season three and see a brand new map hopefully we're getting the new faction there maybe we're getting new heroes you know new war pets new behemoths again all that juiciness that we've all love and and want to play when we come to call of dragons right so that's gonna be it guys that's the patch 1.02 remember it comes out on the 15th if you're wondering when that is that is gonna be wednesday next week so not this week when this video has come out or whenever you guys are watching it it comes out on the 15th of november um so look out for it and just make sure if you are wanting to you know get the best ups guess what we're going to be doing a video all the things you should be doing at the end of the season right now to take advantage of everything in this season reset. So with all of that, smash the like, comment, and subscribe, guys. And until my next video, stay safe, stay sneaky, guys. And peace out.